All right, this is a universal remote control. We're going to take it apart today, see what's inside it and what makes it tick. Uh, there are two different kinds of universal remote controls. There are learning remotes, and then there are ones that function on code libraries. So this one functions on a code library. The learning remotes tend to be more expensive, uh, but what, what the learning remotes do is you have a learning remote, and you can, you can put it next to the, the original remote and uh, basically tr use the original remote to program the learning remote, and then it will... Uh, it will function there. Those, like I said, tend to be more expensive, more complex. This one just has a, a code library built in, and so you, you enter a certain sequence of numbers, and you can pull up a certain code, and then that will allow this to uh, trigger uh, whatever device that code goes with. So I've, I've already cut the, uh, the box apart here. Let's go ahead and pull the remote out. Okay, so you can see it's got a number of different buttons on here, can each perform different functions. And there's a little LED, a light emitting diode that lights up there. And uh, so let's take the back part of it uh, out. And uh, this is a uh, this is a little battery cover, and the battery cover is injection molded. And you can tell that for a number of reasons. One is it's it's very precisely made, and the other is that it has a uh, has these little injection ejector pins marks on it. So those little circles are pins that were used to to push the part out of the mold after it was made. Um, and you can see right here. It says uh, ABS plastic, so it's an ABS plastic part. And ABS was selected because it's fairly low cost and impact resistant. And we all know that remote controls tend to get beat, beat up and knocked around a lot, so that's a good plastic to use. Um, so let's see if we can pop this apart. Usually these, uh, these devices have, yeah, there we go. All right, this one's molded together. All right. All right. So uh, this uh, device is used uh, uses what's called an interference fit or a snap fit, and again, the the bottom housing and the top housing are made out of ABS plastic. You can see that again right here, just uh, the ABS uh, symbol there, and the the plastic recycling symbol. And uh, anyway, so uh, they, they these things are called uh, bosses or standoffs, and they hold the circuit. Uh, board in place and these are the little tabs that allow it to snap together now the reason it doesn't have any screws is that it uh, helps to reduce cost so this this remote was very inexpensive and so re reducing cost was a, a key way to to be able to produce it for a low amount and still make money selling them okay so you can see uh, we've got a, a number of different components here these things these springs right here are what the batteries connect to so there's a springs on the inside here and then other ones here. So there looks like it uses AAA batteries and uh, the power goes through these springs to the other side of the board. And we have a, uh, looks like a resistor here, maybe a filter of some sort, and a uh, capacitor, dielectric capacitor. And then up here we've got a uh, infrared LED. So that shines light in the infrared spectrum. So you can't see it with a visible eye. If you had an infrared camera, you could see it. It would be shining like a, like a flashlight. Um, but since we can't see an infrared, it looks invisible, which is kind of nice because you don't want to constantly be shining a flashlight on your, on your TV or your stereo. And then there's a little indicator LED here. So let's turn that over. And we have our printed circuit board and our buttons. So uh, the mold, the, another reason for injection molding is it's very precise, and so you can get really nice, clean fit. So these buttons fit nicely into there. Um, these buttons are a great uh, way to reduce cost, too, because they're, there's no springs that cause the buttons to return. It's actually the material itself. So this material is a material called Santaprene, and, and it has a particular resilience, and so it causes the button to return to its original location after it's pressed, and there's no, no need for springs. And then there's these little uh, conductive contacts down here, and those conductive contacts, when a button is pressed, connect these little uh, conductive uh, exposed fingers here. So there, there's these little parts. I'm not sure if you can see those very clearly, but these little tiny parts here have these, these interlocking uh, exposed contacts. And so they're shaped like this. And so when you push a button, it causes the uh, conductor on the back here to come into contact with those exposed fingers, and it makes the sends the electrical impulse to this guy, which is a, a little integrated circuit, 
and it uh, it had stores the code library and it uh, it also interprets the signals from each of these switches so if you're watching uh, you know channel 4 and you push or you want to watch channel 4 and you push channel 4 and it triggers this connection here then uh, this thing sends uh, tells the uh, tells the batteries to send power to the LED and and it blinks in a, the infrared LED blinks in a particular pattern and that pattern is interpreted by your stereo or your TV and it causes the stereo TV to to change to that uh station or channel and you can see on the back this this uh, whole board right here is made out of fiberglass and it's got a, a thin layer of copper applied to the back uh, you can see in places the copper is etched away and there's just uh, the places where you see the sort of lighter green is where the copper is and the places where it's darker there's no copper so what that does is it allows you to create like wires that connect everything together the copper acts like a wire it's a conductor and the spaces between the copper uh, function like an insulator so you don't you don't have any uh, any shorts but uh, so these little uh, copper connections here uh, are allow for a current to flow and they send signals back to the microprocessor again the microprocessor interprets those and then sends uh, signals to the infrared LED which sends the signals off to your TV and if, if you could see this uh, when w with an infrared again if you could see it with an infrared camera you'd see fla different sequences of flashes uh, coming from this LED and those would be what triggers the uh, the change in in your TV or your stereo and uh, the co the contacts here are coated so that they don't corrode and also so that that they uh, are insulated somewhat they're coated usually with like a lacquer coating and then this shiny metal here this is called solder and it and it basically fastens connectors like this to the other side of the board and make sure that there's a conductive connection there so that the power from the batteries gets sent to the board. Anyway, that's it. That's our universal remote.